Skype ready to start it. There is a lot at stake with the Mars 2020 mission. The successful delivery of its rover Perseverance to the surface of Mars will mark a very important point in space exploration. For the first time, experiments will be conducted and data collected on the surface of Mars with the primary purpose of enabling future human exploration. Tango Delta nominal. When we landed on the moon in 1969, many people thought that it was the beginning of human colonization of the solar system. Moon base in 1982, Mars in 1983. The Pan Am airline even started taking reservations for future scheduled passengers flights to the moon. Whether or not they were actually serious is debatable. After the excitement of the moon landing faded away, the big difference between landing humans on the moon and landing humans on Mars became apparent. But it's not a matter of distance. It's the logistical issue that orbital mechanics creates in conjunction with the large distance, which happens to be at least 142 times further than the moon. The moon is distance locked to Earth. That is, the distance to the moon is just about constant. However, the distance to Mars is not. It varies between 54.6 million kilometers to 401 million kilometers. And keep in mind that these are linear distances, straight lines from Earth to Mars. In reality, any travel in space will be on a curved trajectory due to the gravity and the motion of the planets, thus increasing the travel distance and time even more. The increase in distance normally wouldn't be a problem if we had a proper propulsion system. One that could be used for hours continuously and has a very high thrust to weight ratio. But the reality is we're not there yet. So longer distance equals more time. The longer the time, the more the Earth and Mars will move apart. And if we plan to stay a few months on Mars, we will be in a position where it's no longer possible for us to get back to Earth on the technology that got us there because the Earth has moved away too far. We would have to wait for Earth and Mars to get close again, which could take about a year. In either case, the biggest hurdle to an extended stay on Mars is sustainability. And this is where the Perseverance rover will start to give us some important data surrounding this issue. In any space mission that plans to return to Earth, the fuel required to leave the target and return to Earth must be transported to said planet. Almost all space missions are a one-way trip, so this is a non-issue. However, this option is not available for human missions for obvious reasons. With the Martian gravity being 2.3 times stronger than that of the Moon, the fuel required to leave the surface of Mars is much higher. Since the return trip fuel is not needed to get to Mars, if we can find a way to produce fuel on site on Mars, or in situ as it's called, we can dramatically reduce our launch mass from Earth. This translates to a cheaper, smaller launch vehicle. Landing on Mars itself will also benefit from the in situ method because the landing vehicle only carries the fuel it needs to land. This will make it require less fuel to land and a lighter overall structure. All these savings makes it technically and financially easier for humans to land and extend their stay on Mars. This all assumes, of course, that we can produce our return fuel on Mars. And this is where Perseverance will help us test this assumption. By carrying out the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXI for short, Perseverance will attempt to produce oxygen from the carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere. Even though rockets require fuel and oxidizer, MOXIE will only address the production of the oxidizer. This is not necessarily a shortcoming since the oxidizer is 78% of the propellant mass in a method oxygen propulsion system. MOXIE is a module located inside of Perseverance. It has two main jobs. 1. Compress the incoming airflow. 2. Extract oxygen from the carbon dioxide. MOXIE first pulls in the Martian air through a high-efficiency particulate air filter, HEPA filter for short. This is used to prevent Martian dust from entering the system. 
Beyond the filter is a compressor which increases the low pressure Martian air by a factor of 100. The compressor used is a scroll compressor. Since this type of compressor has far less moving parts than a conventional piston pump, it runs smoother, is quieter, and is very compact. With the Martian air now at 70% of the air pressure at sea level on Earth, it is introduced to the solid oxide electrolysis subsystem, SOXI for short. Solid oxide electrolysis is a technology used in fuel cells. It's used to produce oxygen from carbon dioxide. The cathode has a nickel coating that initiates the electrochemical reaction by providing a conductive avenue for electrons. Both cathode and anode are porous materials that allows diffusion of oxygen ion to occur through the electrolyte. The carbon dioxide is first heated to 800 degrees Celsius. When a voltage is applied to the system and carbon dioxide is flown over the cathode, the following net reaction takes place. Basically, one atom of oxygen is stripped from the carbon dioxide and set free. It is later combined with other free oxygen atoms to form O2. The carbon monoxide is vented in the Martian atmosphere and the oxygen is temporarily stored. A total of five cells will be used to produce oxygen. Moxie will be able to produce 10 grams of oxygen per hour. It's roughly 0.5% of the scale that would be necessary to produce oxygen for use as a propellant for a four-person mission to Mars, assuming that the empty oxygen tank on the Mars Ascent vehicle would be filled in 14 months. In this scheme, the Ascent vehicle with power source and chemical processing plant is sent towards Mars about 26 months before human departure from Earth. One resource that's continuously required for human space exploration is water. The average adult requires 3.2 liters of water a day. This is only for consumption. As the amount of people and the length of stay on Mars increases, amenities similar to Earth will have to be introduced in the habitats. Better toilets, showering, food preparation, among other things, will require a large amount of water. And no matter how good a water recycling system is, some amount will be lost. So, the water transported to Mars will be lost in a relatively short amount of time. A long-term solution to the water problem is to harvest water that's already available on Mars. All of the water on Mars is in the form of ice. And except for the polar regions, most of the ice is underground in ice patches. But pinpointing the location and depth of these ice patches to useful accuracy is not possible from sensors located on orbiters. This is where another useful experiment of perseverance comes in. Radar imager for Mars's subsurface exploration, or RIMFAX for short. RIMFAX is a ground penetrating radar that sends electromagnetic waves into the ground and listens for reflection caused by certain materials in the path of the wave. Depending on intensity and how long it takes to receive the reflections, scientists can determine the kind of materials that's under the rover and how thick they are. This is possible because a model based on reflection times and intensity was created on Earth using known materials under the ground. Since RIMFAX is a Norwegian contribution to the Mars 2020 mission, it was tested on the Norwegian island of Svalbard, located only 1,050 kilometers from the North Pole, and with the average winter temperature as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius, minimal rainfall, it's one of the better locations on Earth to loosely mimic some Mars environmental conditions. Interestingly, Svalbard is also the location of the Global Seed Vault. RIMFAX will ping the ground for every 10 centimeters that the rover moves. So, as it moves across Mars, a scan will be created of the subsurface. Scientists will then use the scan to see how well they can detect rock layers under the ground by comparing them to nearby outcrops. If RIMFAX produces reliable results, then an advanced version will be flown on robotic missions to locations where orbiters have detected underground ice patches. Based on the more accurate RIMFAX estimation of the location, depth, and accessibility of the ice patches, 
a permanent human base may be established at one of these locations. Put this all aside, the main reason for going to Mars is for humans to explore the landscape firsthand and create a permanent base. In order to do that, extravehicular activities or EVA must be performed. Basically, that is, humans must have the ability to explore Mars on foot. This requires a spacesuit, of course, and we've already done this on the moon. So it shouldn't require new technologies, but it does. The main difference between Apollo missions and proposed Mars missions is exploration time. The longest EVA for the Apollo missions happened during Apollo 17, coming in at about 22 hours over a three day period. On Mars, the minimum stay on the surface that's being proposed is 30 days. This would lead to longer EVAs and more time the spacesuit will be exposed to the Martian elements. First and foremost, the gravity on Mars is 2.3 times higher than that on the Moon, so lighter materials may have to be used to keep the weight of the spacesuit reasonable. Second, the dust on Mars will affect the spacesuit differently than the dust did on the Moon. Although new materials for future spacesuits are being tested on Earth, the best way to get actual data on how well these materials can withstand the Martian environment is to test them on Mars. And once again, Perseverance will help us get this data. Scanning habitable environments with ramen and luminescence for organics and chemicals, or Sherlock for short, is an instrument that will help scientists to analyze Martian rocks in great detail. It has a spatial resolution of only 30 micrometers. Using deep ultraviolet radiation to induce fluorescence in a sample, Sherlock can analyze and detect many chemical components at the micro level. And this is where it's also useful for analyzing new spacesuit materials. Attached to Sherlock is a calibration plate which contains 10 sample materials. Six are used to calibrate Sherlock for proper operation after landing on Mars. The other four are four spacesuit materials, including materials that could be used in the visor. Sherlock will be used to look at these materials in detail and see how they degrade in the Martian environment over time. Simultaneously, while the materials are being exposed on Mars, a test on Earth will expose the same material in the Martian environmental chamber using data collected by Perseverance and periodically test the chemical changes compared to the mechanical strength of these materials. Even though the spacesuits for Mars will be designed to keep astronauts safe during EVAs in the surface environment, unlike the Moon, this environment changes over time. Mars has a weather. This makes it impossible to design a suit that's optimal for all weather conditions that might be encountered. For this reason, knowing what kind of weather to expect and how it changes over time is very important for both the design of the spacesuit and EVAs on the surface. Just like on Earth, being able to predict the weather on Mars will help astronauts plan their daily activities better and also alert them of approaching dangerous conditions. This will give them a chance to seek better shelter if necessary. Keep in mind that humans on these future Mars missions will explore much further from their landing craft than the Apollo astronauts did. So the more time they have to seek shelter, the further they can venture from their landing craft safely. Orbiters around Mars cannot give detailed information about the weather to be useful to a local area. Only surface-based instruments can do that, and Perseverance has 19 sensors to do just that. Three air temperature sensors, one humidity sensor, one pressure sensor, eight radiation and dust sensors, five thermal radiation sensors, and one wind sensor. All these sensors are monitored by the Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer, or META, for short. META will work continuously in the background gathering environmental data at the current location of Perseverance. And if combined with relevant data from orbiters and assets on the ground, such as data from Curiosity and InSight, a better global model will emerge over time. Still, there will be some unknowns when humans potentially head to Mars in the 2030s, but Perseverance will help to minimize the amount of unknowns they will have to deal with. We get one try every two years. It takes six months for us to get there each time we try. 
and when we get there, it will take about 30 minutes just for the crew to hear the congratulations from Earth. For about half of that 30 minutes, they would have no one to share this historic moment with. But regardless, they know they've stepped into history with the help of perseverance. Earth is just late to the party. I'm DexDFX for the Celestial Sphere. Thank you.